Yesterday, I read with great sadness about the moral failure of yet another leader in the Christian community. This has become an all too familiar occurrence. A few years ago, Carrie Newhoff wrote a blog post chronicling several reasons why, or, or more precisely, several actions that lead to Christian leaders encountering moral failures. To be sure, these are things that we should all closely examine. These are not just issues for Christian leaders in the public spotlight. What caught my attention in Carrie's post was that he wrote it from the first person perspective, putting in place guidance to help him stay away from falling into the trap of sexual sin. I'd like to take a little bit of time today to highlight a few of the things that he pointed out. One of his points was, was this. He said, I have stopped confessing my sins. Let me be honest, going to God and telling him that you've sinned again is no fun, but continually working to stay in a right relationship with Him is critical. When Holy Spirit points out sin in my life, I have two choices, deal with it or ignore it. Ignoring it may seem easier, but it is so dangerous. Unconfessed sin leads to more unconfessed sin. Just look at King David and Bathsheba. Lust led to adultery. Adultery led to deceit. Deceit led to murder. When his sin was finally exposed, David confessed it to God and asked for forgiveness. 1 John 1.9 says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. The purifying work of God is what we all need in our lives. It's what keeps me from sinning more and it is initiated by confessing the sin that is already present in my life. Another reason Kerry points out is this. He says, I have chosen isolation over community. In community, there is accountability. If I don't let anyone get close enough to me to see what is going on in my life, deep in my life, then there is also no one close enough to me to grab a hold of me and keep me from falling to prevent me from going over the cliff. If confessing sin to God is difficult, try confessing it to a friend. I'm currently involved with a small group of people in our church district who are getting to know me well. And as uncomfortable as that is at times, it is also refreshing because they know me and they still love me. They are modeling Christ's love to me. Two verses earlier in 1 John 1, the apostle says this, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. I believe that, in part, what John is saying is that fellowship with one another involves moving out into the light, where everything, all the ugliness in my life, can be seen. Here, too, we see the process of purification. In the book in the Old Testament, the Song of Solomon, we are given good advice. It says this, Catch the foxes, those little foxes, before they ruin the vineyard. Those little foxes. I need to deal with all the sin, especially the little things that I might try to reason away or justify. That is the only way to keep more and more sin from building up. Deal with it by confessing it to God and to a friend, and by doing so, welcome the purifying work of God into my life. 